today on country squire radio we're talking tobacco you know because you know pipe tobacco podcast it is a pipe podcast you would almost expect that to be the case from time to time (laughs) Uh, we also got a great pipe question of the week all about how not to be one of these pipe shop failures uh we also have a quick fire they're asking the wrong people if they want to uh (laughs) you know know the answer to stuff like that i think it's i think it's like a customer looking to figure out how to make sure they don't end up on your list oh oh, good no that's (laughs) hey hey, that's 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 solid yeah we also have a quick fire questions listener feedback and more happening right now on country squire radio welcome to country squire radio i'm Bo, and i'm john david jd hey Bo. good afternoon man. good afternoon to you too sir how you doing <laughs> i'm doing great yeah, yeah I'm doing great um <laughs> yeah you know it, th- th- things are good um uh yeah just rock and roll and it's uh it is go season here at uh ye old pipe shop yeah and of course uh you know lots of uh lots of gifts people are starting to pour in and and buy those trinkets for uh mommy and daddy and, yeah man and uh, you got the lights up and everything there's, there's little lights and stuff uh kind of decorating and you know drawing people to our, our various wares and it's uh yeah it's nice it's, it's good it's very, it's very pleasant took a took a small uh excursion this weekend to the beach that was good um just kind of get out of town one more time before uh before all the insanity and uh and you know the weather was terrible and you know i brought all my smoking gear and everything and, yeah, and yeah. you know the place we we're staying was not one of these deals where you could smoke inside and so um yeah yeah the the pipe stayed in the uh in its pouch and <laughs> that, that's um, all the plus yeah it, it was uh it was instead just, of falling out it, no that's right that's right it was it was kind of a shame but uh it, it was it was nice to get out a little bit before we uh, you know, dive back into the insanity of it all. So good. Um, yeah, good, man. Good. What's going on with you? Uh, well, you know, a lot of good stuff, which uh, I want to share, but actually I, I want to get something out first before j- diving into that. And uh, for, for those that are tuning in right now on the podcast, uh, for those tuning in live, you'll notice something looks a little bit different as you've probably noticed the last couple of episodes, but for this, for <laughs> like every week, something looks pretty different. It's like, it's like one of those, like, guess what's different in the two pictures. You know what I no, mean? That's like, right. Yeah. Uh, and no, it's not the fact that I'm not wearing my hat. That's a whole nother story. Uh, but it's, it's actually the fact that we are actually not currently using a pop filter. Uh, we've got the mics situated in a bit of a different direction in order to accomplish this. Whether or not it works for the podcast, y'all let us know. Um, I know those of you watching on YouTube, you don't care. You think it looks great because you can finally see our faces. It's been well, which probably might... one of the most requested things about this show. Yeah, is to, is to not have the pop filter. Uh, the, yeah. the, for those of you that aren't aware, because you know, I'm I'm completely ignorant of all this stuff, and Bo's the reason this show gets cobbled together every week. But you know, a, a pop filter is the giant thing that uh, does you the favor of hiding our face. Uh, from the camera each and every week. It's not. It's not the. It's it's a byproduct. The the the, the a... point of the pop filter <laughs> is is all these uh all these p words that we use in uh Pipes. in our pipe podcast pipe podcast. It kind of it it that that's um that the mic is kind of sensitive to that is yes. my understanding, and so the the pop filter kind of kind of helps with the pipe podcast problems. Exactly. And, <laughs> hey, um, look at look at you. And, there you and, go. and so and so we'll uh you know the audio we're we're hoping we're gonna be as consistent as possible. But you know we want you to see our uh, our beautiful faces because hey what goes better at lunchtime than a dose of nausea. Yeah this then that's exactly <laughs> what you're getting right now. Uh but you know and a big shout out of course if we sound at all good uh that is all thanks to our lovely editor Mike. Shouts out to Mike and Mike you will definitely be letting us know as to whether or not we sound good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, he, he might be like, I quit. <laughs> yeah. It, it, that, that may, this may be the week. This may be the week with everything. But, uh, but no, man. So well, things have been going well. You know, it, it's, it's great to actually mention the, the pop filter and the fact that we're going popless, if you will, this particular week is because when we first started this show, I was not <laughs> as knowledgeable as I am today. Uh, in fact, I think that's true for both of us on many things. This is, a- accurate accurate but <laughs> but back then i did not realize that a pipe podcast without a pop filter was going to be a problem and yeah in if you go back and listen to our first ever episodes you can hear that that really annoying tinge and here's the beauty my friend right today you yes you dear listener can actually go back to that first episode in fact the first 10 episodes are currently available on the country squire radio archive feed oh we got so that that is that's good to go it is good to go now for those that are already uh, pipe club members that are already patrons uh they not only are they aware that this is true they are annoyingly uh or they are very annoyed at the fact that this is true because unbeknownst to me, every single time I upload a, a episode onto the archive oh, feed. Pete, that's the deal where people are getting all these emails. They got all these emails. So like, I think it was Wednesday last week. I, you know, people just got that's, bombarded with yeah. email after email after email. That's, that's tough. 
fortunately I stopped at 10 just for my own sanity, just to make sure that, you know, it was working. I didn't want to get like right. all a hundred episode in and then find out there was a problem. So, so, so you only sent out 10, emails. only sent out 10. And I think I, I told everybody <laughs> I was going to look into figuring out a way to, to not make it every single episode. We got a hundred of these episodes. No, no. Right. And, and so uh, unfortunately every single time we upload an episode, it is going to send out an email. So here's what you can kind of expect for those of you that are club members and patrons, uh, either on Monday or Wednesday, <laughs> A, a 10 episode hey, push is going to go forward. Hey, poor turkeys. And yeah. the, the good news yeah. is that you get 10 quote unquote new episodes of the archival uh, old episodes. Right, right. The bad news is you will be, be bombarded. So whether or not you are in a meeting at work, maybe you are uh, at your kid's birthday party, maybe <laughs> you are at the pipe shop, maybe you are in the middle of a therapy session where your therapist is telling you you need no distractions. All during that time, <laughs> your phone's gonna go ping, 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 so ping, ten that, times. That's the day <laughs> that, to let so, you know. So Wednesday, that that's that's the day that uh, that we want to turn our phone on on silent. It'll be Wednesdays and Mondays. Um, okay. My my goal is to do just for the foreseeable future. Just, well, until just we so, get all hundred in. Yeah, so, so, I mean, we'll we'll do that for what ten to eight eight weeks. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, so well, all right. So my goal is to do it so that it's it's ten on Monday, ten on Wednesday. Okay. The reason I didn't do 10 today is because I wanted to put this message out on the podcast first because I know, look, I saw the emails. I saw the tweets. Y'all know everybody. Oh, it was. <laughs> I, everybody was like, why are you sending me so? Many yeah, emails? no, I, it's amazing. People have uh, have stuck with us through this, but, oh, but they're man. gracious and, you know, appreciate the, uh, the the very high quality content back from 2013. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, that you know we uh, when we really knew what we were doing. Yeah, to remind you, just whenever you think, man, this is really bad. Just you have no idea. <laughs> it, get, it gets worse. It, it has been worse. We started from the bottom and we're here. Right. Know, like like we're not we're not quite there, but 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 we're here. Right. <laughs> That's right. So I do want to let people know that. I also want to let them know that the uh, the best of nominations for 2018 are now officially closed, and the voting will actually start this Wednesday. Good. Uh, good. And so we'll have the website up. In fact, if you go to countrysquareradio.com on Wednesday, there'll be a link to actually vote for the best of as opposed to nominate. And uh, yeah, we'll start those voting process in for the end of the year to announce who was the best of 2018. Yeah, I think that's good. In our little uh, part of the universe. And, and, and again, user, listener driven. L l let's Absolutely. All this very very much listener driven so we're, we're excited about that absolutely yeah. absolutely we're not trying to like underhand give things to friends or anything like that it, it's not like you know it's not like uh you know how what is it the the it's the emmys or the oscars the oh you mean we're, we're like the pick, grammys picking the, out all our buddies to win the stuff the golden that, globes that's what it is yeah we're like we're like the the studios they all like oh here's like a couple thousand dollars right here here's a million dollars right here right and then you get a golden globe you basically you buy your trophy yeah that's not this scenario no forget that but it probably should be. <laughs> hey, we got bills, man. Is that a thing? I'm just kidding. Could, could we do that. No. Well, yeah, it is funny, you know, just to to peel the curtain, or you know, just a different perspective in the in in the cigar world. Uh, you know, a, a very you know long time published magazine. Uh, you know, cigar um, aficionado. They have their their ratings, right? And and it, and it's always funny. People, you know, they there's some great cigars on those ratings list. They're fantastic. There's a lot of really good stuff. But but you know the that it just so happens that each and every year, all the people that win those just happen to be the ones that most heavily advertise in Isn't cigar and fishing. Yeah. So it's, it's really, it's really fascinating how that works. Yeah. And I, you know, you just wonder, um, I, you know, obviously there's nothing going on there no, that, that's, course, uh, no, no. you know, no skewing that or whatever, but, uh, you, you know, you kind of, you kind of do wonder occasionally. You, you got to ask the question. You got to, you got to wonder what, <laughs> what might be going on there. Um, all right. So there's, there's all that good stuff. I do have one thing I want to share. Yeah. Uh, and I, I mentioned this a couple episodes back actually, but um, so there's a podcast called Tolkien TV talk uh, about this up, upcoming uh, uh, Amazon prime television series that is based on the Lord of the Rings. I guess I, yeah, I don't remember that. It's been in development. I didn't, it's, I didn't realize that. Yeah. I mean, like it's not, it's, it's very early on in development right now. But uh, but anyway, so there's a podcast that's dedicated to that. Uh, on this last past episode of the Tolkien TV Talk podcast, I was given the opportunity to pitch a television series. If basically, if I was going to pitch a television series to Amazon, what would it be? Uh, and for about thirty to forty five minutes of just pure nerdiness, like like nerdum out the wazoo, <laughs> like like I pride myself get, as get, being get your daily dose, yeah, or, or weekly or monthly, it's, right? It's a lot. 
Uh, but it's very, very uh, uh, Lord of the Rings, Tolkien lore heavy. Um, very good. Kind of dive into. And, yeah. and so I basically I pitch a sequel to the Lord of the Rings, a pseudo sequel to Lord of the Rings. Really? Yeah. And uh, the episode is called Dwarves Are Cool Too. That's not the name of my pitch. Uh, my pitch is actually, <laughs> well, I don't want to spoil it. But anyway, so if, if you want to if you want to find something for your commute, if you want to yeah. get a little uh, nerdy with it and all that no, kind we, of good we, stuff. Yeah, no, well, I, we'll definitely have to check that out. I'm sure we'll have a lot of a uh, lot of fun, you know, feedback. We are, obviously we do have a. A uh, heavy contingent of listeners and uh, and and, uh, and and broadcasters that are that are into that kind of stuff. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, I think it'll be fun. I think I think we got. I That's think this great, will man. Good there. for you. Yeah. All right, so we got to welcome some new club members to the club, to the to the Country Squire Radio International, International Pipe, Pipe club. club. That's right, uh, man. All right, joining us at the Squire level, Eric. Wirt, and that is how I pronounce you. That's that's how your name is pronounced. No, I'm that's sorry. it. That's it. it. It's it's just Eric Wirt. I always feel like, yeah. see, I've I've done this so well that now whenever I can't mispronounce a name, I I, I almost have to apologize that I can't mispronounce the name. Yeah, so no, complete one eighty. No, that's right. That's Joining at the Squire level. Too. Joining that's, at the Squire. That's level. wonderful. Thank you, Eric. So Eric, welcome and. uh Look forward to those bombardment of emails. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's, that's, his, that's his reward for joining the uh, the thing is that now we're going to fill up his inbox. right? And, uh, and <laughs> along with him, man, we got Mike Cushing. And uh, Mike Cushing, uh, Cushing is about to be crushing with the emails. With emails, yeah. But but just for a little, just, <laughs> just for a season. Just for a little while. Just for a season, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you get then you get that wonderful archive. So uh, Eric and Mike, thank you all so much. Welcome to the club. Uh, and if you too want to join the Country Squire Radio International Pipe Club, head over to patreon.com slash country squire radio, uh, where you too can join the club, become a patron. Yeah. One way or the other, you get yeah. access to that archive of uh, 100 episodes of country squire radio dating back to the very first so if that is something that you are interested in patreon.com slash country squire radio yeah and, and then when you're doing your own uh you know uh, uh pipe pairings and uh um uh, you know squire select uh episode on your own you know maybe maybe medicating a hard week kind of thing yeah you know? yeah then you can uh that, that, that that's probably the best that's probably the best time to listen to those old episodes it, it yeah. it's monday are you already medicating a hard week? <laughs> I just, I, I just got the what's feeling. in this coffee. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, look, man, this is a great episode that we yeah. have this week. Um, in many respects, this, the, this is uh, an episode. This is part of a series that uh, is really kind of, it's, it's why you tuned in to country squire radio in the first place. Maybe when you were first coming in, nobody came to country squire radio thinking, Oh, you know what? I wonder if there's something that goes into the pipe culture of sailors. Like nobody, nobody did that. <laughs> Yeah, nobody did that. But we went there. We went there. Right. Uh, and nobody actually came to to us thinking like, you know what? I wonder what specifically, hmm, I wonder if uh, if it's cool to uh, to learn a little bit about, let's say, um, well, no, blending your own tobacco. That that might be one. That might be one. <laughs> we, we've done a pretty good job. Pipe smoking villains. Nobody cares about that. You didn't come to Country Squire Radio for that. We went there, but we you did. didn't come here for that. What you came here for is talking about pipes and more specifically pipe tobacco. And so we are reopening and uh, returning to our wonderful series, uh, Tobacco Talk, where we take various tobaccos and we kind of do a more traditional yeah. review. The yeah. kind of stuff that you find everywhere else. The difference is it's us doing it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and so we hope which means you can trust it even less. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully a, a, a twitch more, maybe, maybe just a little, just more. a bit, just a bit. Uh, no, we're, we, this is so great. Obviously this is the heart and soul of what we do. And, uh, the reason we stay in, uh, in, in, you know, a shop like the country squire and do what we do is because we love pipe tobacco. Absolutely. And, um, you know, people are, people are pipe guys, people are, uh, tobacco guys, people, uh, have their own preferences, but I am decidedly a tobacco guy. And so this is, uh, th this makes it a lot of fun. Um, so today we have a couple, couple of nice ones. I think I'm, I'm fired up about this. Um, we're going to talk first about Ooh. Rattray's exotic passion. Exotic. Isn't that, isn't that beautiful? Oh isn't, yeah. Isn't that can just, just really pretty. It's, it's gorgeous. It, it's, it's really nice. It, it almost it, it, looks it, like something you'd get like tea out of. Yeah. You know? Or, or like a little Christmas present. Yeah, you no, know? that's right. Like a like a tin of cookies or something. You know. Oh yeah, maybe like one of those with the really like the sugar encrusted cookies. Yeah, with the little paper on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> no, this is great. Of course, uh, Rattray's obviously we've talked about them uh, so much before in the past. It is a uh, just a very uh, old old world uh, wonderful company that uh, you know the brand name is has stayed the same, although the manufacturing over the years has changed uh, here and there. But it's uh, it's done really well. Uh, the exotic orange actually, uh, it, it, it is known as exotic orange, but also as exotic passion uh, in, you know, a lot of the um, a lot of the countries now that uh, are, you know, in the Western world are, you know, pushing towards uh, having less and less of uh, food or fruit names in the 
uh, in the title of the tobacco, right? Because they're trying to get away from from that. I, yeah, you know, I mean, I, is, that, is there I, a stigma? Th- th- there's. It's not that it's a stigma. It's just that they're trying to, you know, in, in a lot of countries, their mind is, oh, we don't want, um, you know, kids thinking this is going to be like a, you know, sur- supercharged blueberry slurpy tobacco kind of deal and so they don't put that, that that's why you know they're trying that's why they're okay, trying to get yeah, rid yeah. of like menthol cigarettes and stuff because yeah, yeah, oh right. mint well that attracts young people whatever so um so the eu is has, that self-regulation or is that regulation oh no that's definitely government yeah, yeah. Def- definitely government inf- in, uh, regulation so um so in in the eu they have forced them to change the name from this from exotic orange uh, to exotic passion. Now, in, in the United States, occasionally you can still find a can uh, that's called exotic orange because uh, we have not quite gotten that far. Although, you know, it's it's certainly looking like it's going to head in that direction. Passion but, sounds better than orange, though. That well, sounds know, like you know. know. And, and and actually, I kind of like it because it um it doesn't it doesn't pigeonhole this blend before you smoke it. it so you yeah. know, I, I got a lot of different things when I smoke this tobacco, but you know, and orange was one of them. But I don't know. It kind of didn't didn't pigeonhole it, right? You know, yeah, you kinda, yeah, yeah. yeah you, you get almost identified before someone gives you a fair shot. If you're looking for notes of orange, that's all you'll find. But if you're kind of like, if it's more right. of an open end, like, and you're like, what other notes are like, what notes are in here? You'll pick up the orange. Well, you might yeah. pick up uh, a little bit of this. So that. you know, I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Kohlhaas and Kopp, they're of course out of Germany. Uh, one of the you know best uh, pipe blenders in the world, and they they make all the stuff for rat trays, and then and also uh, also uh, Robert McConnell, who we'll talk about next. We've talked about some of their blends before. Um, Black Cavendish, Burley, um, and, uh, and Virginia's, this is a, a general fruit fusion. You know, you're getting a lot of different, uh, fruit elements kind of thrown at you. Typically a uh, tropical fruit. There's some mango in here. Um, it's just a nice, uh, kind of pleasant all day smoke. Um, th- there's some floral notes, uh, and, and, and then obviously that, that orange undercarriage that is kind of throughout the, uh, the tobacco. I, I picked up a very, um, a, a very faint, but a, but certainly a very distinctive uh, taste of blackberry in this tobacco too. Ooh, really? And I, I wonder if anyone else got a berry flavor um, that maybe uh, maybe wasn't intended, or or maybe it was intended. Maybe huh. you know, a lot of times they'll mix different uh, fruit flavors in order to get. Um, you know, they'll meld them together to accomplish something that's, that's t- almost like the sum is greater than the parts kind of deal. You know, and so uh, blackberry may be a may be a part of that as well. Um, relatively, uh, dry aromatic for, uh, you know, a tinned, uh, aromatic, a lot of, um, a lot of tins typically are drier than your bulk, uh, aromatics, you know, there's less of the, um, you know, um, it, it kind of stickiness, gunkiness there. Um, it, it stays lit easy. It's something that very, uh, is very easy to smoke. Um, it, it uh, lo- has lots of flavor, burns uh, relatively cool, again, if you sip the tobacco. Um, and the great thing about this particular tobacco is it won't gunk up the pipe, right? It's, a, it's, it's got a very, sure. um, a very nice, uh, strong flavor. That orange undercarriage just goes through the entire bowl, um, but it's not going to gunk up your pipe, which is really nice. So, um, yeah, it's just uh, you know one of those things that I think is a, a nice all-day tobacco. Uh, it could ghost your pipe a little bit. There is almost an element of... Uh, Lakeland-esque flavor there uh, oh. that's just enough of that kind of uh, floral uh, note to to think about that. So you'll want to smoke this in a in a pipe that uh, you're going to be enjoying aromatic tobaccos out of, right? It's, isn't that true of any aromatic, though, that you kind of run the risk? Yeah, of... to, to some degree. Now, I think others are, you know, not quite as distinctive or uh, maybe, you know, for some people as offensive as, as others. Um, you, you know, we have, uh, in, you know, a lot of aromatics can be, you know, drier, more mellow. Uh, this certainly is a mellow tobacco, but it's not uh, over the top, um, you know, with uh, sweetness or whatever. But at the same time, it's going to have um, just enough of that kind of tang to think, you know, you probably want to put this in a pipe that's dedicated towards towards uh, towards aromatic tobacco. Interesting. Yep. Interesting. So that we can get a good clean smoke. But we'll, yeah. we'll talk more about that option later yeah no that's good that's that's, that's exactly right yeah so yeah. uh so beautiful i'll let you uh kind of take a look at that yeah. and describe what you're seeing there and gorgeous then, uh yeah so of course you got the uh the black tin with the uh the orange writing 100, and 100 gram tin big uh big square can oh you're a yeah. rectangle right yeah like yeah um, re- that's right yeah, yeah yeah and then of course you've got the uh the orange tree but uh, in in gold so you have kind of these uh golden fruits it's it's uh lifted it's uh indented what, what do you call it when you got the impression? embossed is embossed that, is that is that it that sounds right yeah it's got a good texture to it like that's that's really nice and so you feel like you're about to open something really special <clears throat> all right all right so 
I, I think I've said this kind of thing before. Yeah. But whenever you have that, wow, first of all, sorry, the 10 node is very orange. Yeah, that, you, you open it and, and yeah. you get you get the citrus immediately, right? right. Yeah. How orange is it? Orange enough that I had to stop talking to notify it because it <laughs> hit me real, real strong. Um, but I've talked about this before, but I feel like whenever the 10s are uh, of this caliber, you're almost missing something if you don't have more of that paper you know, wrapping inside. to go around no, it. No, it's like when you buy the fancy bread at the grocery store yeah. and you have to unwrap it twice. You yeah, open the yeah, bread yeah. and it's still not open because it's fancy. It's got the it's well, got the paper. Well, wrap. yeah, no, th this is this th this uh, tobacco equivalent of that. You yeah. open it and then you have to open it again. But see, though, this is the thing. <laughs> with with this one, though, I'm almost kind of surprised that you got a plastic wrap as opposed to more of like the parchment wrap. You know, like Yeah, but it's it is kind of this nice uh cellophane, oh, you know. From a quality yeah. standpoint, it makes a ton of sense. Yeah. But yeah. You know, it's just, no, I, I get know. it. I get it. But it is, I will say other um it is better than other situations like this i've seen with kind of the plastic on the inside where especially because you have kind of the gold ratchet's logo on it a ratchet's logo on it yeah that's printed on the on the plastic it does yeah. it does kind of maintain that that sense of quality and uh sophistication even all right so again it was not fully opened we opened up the tin boom orange in your face right uh let's see Whew. beautiful okay so very very fruity um, yeah, as soon as you smell the tobacco, you, you you're immediately aware that this is a, uh, you know, this is an aromatic treat, right? It, it's one of those that you know, if you're not into citrus or uh, something like that, you know, this is probably not the not the tobacco for you. Interesting. Well, but because, and it's not just citrus. I mean, like you yeah. said before, there there is almost kind of a berry note. Like even though the tin note is very orange, it's the mm -hmm. first thing that you're kind of hit with. Mm -hmm. I don't get the sense that this is just like an orange bomb. Well, yeah, you know and, there, I mean? and there are floral notes there as well. You know, some people might even get, a, a lot of aromatics are notorious for this. You'll get, uh, you know, notes of chocolate and liqueur and all kinds of other things, mm -hmm. uh, w which is interesting. Now, this is one of those cans. Uh, you know, Solani's got a few tins like this. Uh, the Some of the special edition Peterson tins are like this. Uh, Rattray's, of course, uh, has several tins like this. But th this is not a vacuum-sealed tin. And so the interesting, yeah. Okay. So, and we've talked huh. about this before yeah. on the show. You know, this is a can where, uh, you know, this has a shelf life, right? You, you uh, when this is put on the shelf in a shop, because this is not vacuum sealed, it's, you know, you, you're going to want to buy this at a relatively, um, you know, early state, at, you know, after it's been uh, manufactured and put on the shelf. So this is not one of those cans where, uh, you know, you're going to go in the store and find one from 2008 and that's a good thing. Right. I mean, you, you know, you, you want to if, if you do want to sell her this tobacco, you need to get it um, because it's not vacuum sealed. Take it out of its packaging and put it in a uh, some type of tight sealed glass jar, or mason jar or something of that nature uh, relatively quick, because it this this does, uh, unlike almost all other uh, tobacco packaging does have, you know, kind of that shelf life. So, um, yeah, so it's not something to think about. Right. Um, that, that's it's the beauty of a can like this that is so uh, attractive. But at the same time, um, you know, you, you're going to want to take uh, especially tobacco as expensive as this. You know, there's probably you're probably looking at a 20 or 25 dollar tin of tobacco. Yeah. And so you're probably going to want to take the tobacco out of here and put it in some type of jar if you plan on keeping it long term. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's the shape, right? When it all comes down to it. A is it? I mean, it's harder to vacuum seal a rectangle or a square as opposed to. Well, that's to... part of it, but then it, also this it was never even you know meant to be uh, vacuum sealed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's almost uh, it, you know if you create something this size, there are plenty of vacuum sealed tins that are square or rectangular. Uh, but for whatever reason, some of these, uh, you know, uh, blenders with their special edition stuff, more premium stuff, they choose to not do that. And I, I think that's interesting. I, mm. I don't know why. Maybe uh, because the packaging is just so attractive, they think they can kind of uh, get away with it. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. No, I mean, <laughs> se se seriously, though, you know, right, 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 and, and, yeah. and then also people reuse these tins. They'll put their little pipe knickknacks in here. I mean, it's big enough to hold a, uh, you know, a, the tin itself is big enough to reuse as a small pipe caddy. You know, if you've got a. Uh, pocket pipe and you know maybe fold up a few a few pipe cleaners an ounce of tobacco and uh and your check tool will all fit in there so oh, yeah, um, man. so anyway something to think about but yeah it, it, this is this is a tobacco you're going to want to buy uh pretty soon after it was manufactured uh and if you do want to keep it long term uh you'll want to uh you, you know you want to put it in a jar all right yeah. so if a uh, fantastic uh tobacco i think really uh really nice just something that's nice for uh an everyday aromatic smoke um uh, one note, uh, uh, a lot of folks online uh, said this is a great aromatic for people that like uh, Virginia tobaccos. And so if you're if you're a Virginia tobacco smoker, 
uh, that particularly those flakes that kind of have a citrusy note to them anyway, but want something a little sweeter. Uh, this may be kind of a, an aromatic, ready rubbed, uh, or, you know, ribbon cut uh, tobacco that, uh, you know, you could introduce occasionally just to kind of augment your, uh, your Virginia tobacco collection. So anyway, it's good. Yeah. Something to think about. There you have it for Rattray's exotic, exotic passion. passion. Oh yeah. <laughs> Do I sense a Saturday night live sketch coming, coming out of that? Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere in there. Um, yep. Yeah. All right. What we got next? So next, uh, of course, a very, uh, highly, uh, sought after tobacco, sometimes hard to find. It seems like nowadays, uh, Robert McConnell, we've talked about, mm. uh, the history of Robert McConnell. We've talked about, um, you know, even some of their packaging and stuff, how, uh, it's just very simple and, uh, you know, and, and all that for, for such a, um, a venerated, you know, his, historic, uh, uh, old school, uh, brand. Uh, but again, uh, all these tobaccos from Robert McConnell made by Colhas and Cop as well, uh, that again, you know, that, that blender, that, uh, manufacturer in Germany is just making some of the best, uh, most well-known tobaccos on earth. And, um, they, they do a great job. There's just so many, so many good ones that they produce nowadays, but we're talking today about Glenn Piper, uh, Glenn Piper, um, a mellow aromatic pipe tobacco. Um, it, you know, they are, they're not much on giving you a whole lot of information when you look at the tin. You know, you, 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 you pull your tin of Robert McConnell tobacco out and, uh, you don't, you just don't get a lot more no. than the name. You know, I mean, like if that's, it, that's about all you get, I'm guessing green apple or mint. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Right. Cause yeah, it's green. Cause it, it, cause it's green. That's really well, all or you, lime. Cause that's all is, you get. Yeah. Or like, like a lime flavor. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so uh, the back of it, all it says is mature Virginia, sweet Cavendish and, uh, and Brown. Why wouldn't they, that, that, that's all it says mature Virginia, sweet Cavendish comma Brown. Brown so, Cavendish, uh, as opposed to black Cavendish. I, I, I maybe I, I, I don't know. It just says brown. Well, why wouldn't they call it yeah. a tin brown? <laughs> why is it green? I don't know. Why did they put green at the back of it? I don't know. I don't know. It but, was green at one point. But what's so I've funny? Seen tobacco leaves. What's so funny about these tobaccos is that they're some of the best in the world, and some of them after right now. Um, but yeah, you're just kind of getting this simple little uh, nondescript can that uh, you know could have anything in it. So, uh, so, so Glenn, Glenn Piper, a mellow aromatic pipe tobacco. Um, Black Cavendish, um, what it doesn't say uh, is it's got Kentucky and Perique in it as well. And so this is interesting because this is an aromatic tobacco that is featuring tobaccos that are commonly found in more robust, uh, peppery, spicy, uh, you know, sophisticated tobaccos that tend to tend to not have any topping or casing on them, or at least not uh, very commonly. And so so you've got uh, one of these hybrid style blends that we like to talk about, right? Uh, tobacco that features uh, non non aromatic elements, uh, but it um, is is it is decidedly in the aromatic camp. It just uh, you know has some tobaccos that you wouldn't think. Uh, our old Toby that we sell at the shop here has Perique in it. Well, Perique typically isn't in a lot of uh, aromatic tobaccos, but sometimes uh, you know the guy behind the counter is uh, feeling a little a little squirrely and it's like, hey, let's throw some of that in there, see let's what happens, crazy. and and then you, and then you have a pretty good tobacco, you know. So um, uh, again, technically not an air or it is an aromatic, but. Um, you, you know, you'll get some different things here. They hot press the tobacco for several days and then slowly uh, introduce the the flavor elements of fruit and uh, liqueur into this tobacco. And so you're going to get um, a variety of things. Uh, most people say it's like a chocolate or a cocoa flavor. Um, you know, I got um, I, I got the impression that this is almost like if Lane One Q were maybe richer and deeper with more uh, bolder notes that had uh, kind of a uh, just a non-aromatic element to it. It's almost like Lane Lane One Q's uh, grown-up, older, more sophisticated brother, right? Okay. Uh, which, which I thought was a kind of a fascinating thing. So you, you do get some chocolate in there, uh, but uh, yeah, just a, lots of rich, uh, rich notes. Uh, dark. It kind of reminds me of those mature Virginias that have a lot of natural sugar and uh, and all that. So. Um, Anyway, uh, really tasty. It, it is uh, smooth. Uh, again, a, as most aromatics are, if you smoke them uh, very slowly. And so uh, the tin moisture is nice. It, um, it, you open up the can. Actually, I'm going to let you uh, you open up that can. Okay. Yeah. And uh, as, as I open it up, can I can I kind of channel one of our listeners really quick? Of course. Yeah. Um, oh, yes. 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 As I as I open up the can, um, I, I would share with uh, uh, Unicorn Piper his feelings. That uh, it's just like chocolate covered raisins. Wow. 
Wow. Live, live, live commentary. No, that's, Hey, that's great. And, um, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and unicorn Piper, you, you were the reason I drink. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Wow. Uh, yeah, no, wow. we have, uh, so many wonderful <laughs> tobaccos that, uh, that, that are, um, you know, really, uh, just have that raisin raisin flavor. Yeah. Chocolate covered raisins. So immediately I kind of <laughs> noticed that the texture here seems a little bit drier. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure as you get down, that's not necessarily the case, but yeah, no, that's right. It, this is a, a ready rub tobacco. They've taken the the flakes of this and just kind of, uh, torn it apart by hand. And it has this kind of a chunky, uh, you know, characteristic to it. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's on the edge of between ready rubbed and ribbon cut. It's just real, um, you know, kind of a, kind of a nice, um, consistency to it. No reason really to tear it apart any further than it already is. But um, yeah, it, the the moisture level I, I think is just right for um, smoking immediately. Um, it, it is a little more moist than the exotic passion that we talked about. Uh, Interesting. Hmm. Or the exotic orange that we talked about earlier. Uh, and so one of those that you'll just, uh, you know, uh, be able to dive right in, I think. Some people might want to let it dry out a little bit more, um, which, uh, which is fine. So, so one thing, I mean, I, I it's I definitely, it doesn't have a strong tin note, but you get in there, you definitely get the, yeah. the uh, kind of the scent of cocoa, not necessarily chocolate per se, but yeah. cocoa. Yeah. It, 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 it's, it's a deeper, richer flavor. Yeah. Uh, certainly no milk chocolate or anything like that. It's cocoa, dark chocolate, um, you know, more of the, um, uh, th there's a bitterness there that's really pleasing, huh, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a very full bodied tobacco. So, and it's interesting, you know, as, uh, as you exhale on the back end of that deal, you're going to get. Uh, those notes of pepper, uh, you know, smoke, peat, uh, which, which are just not particularly characteristic of, um, you know, of of aromatic tobaccos, which I think is uh, is interesting. But again, this is a full bodied uh, tobacco and it does have that aromatic um, uh, note to it. So it's a it's a good good tobacco. I think it's a, it's going to be a stretch for your aromatic smoker uh, and it'll be a stretch for your purely non aromatic smoker. So you've got this little devilish grin on your face and I, no, I, I, I don't know what to do with it. But. I, I just I just wanted to say, uh, you know, unicorn, I, I, I think it smells like chocolate covered raisins. Too. <laughs> John David is he's not he's not a snob, but for whatever reason, whenever anybody mentions raisins, he gets a little snobbish on. And, you know, you just hear it. Uh, but I mean, it's there just because just because you don't like a, it. Everybody only, says that about everything doesn't only mean so it's not times. there in this one. There, there, there's only so many times you can take it. You know, I mean, I, now, now, I feel like we're bleeding back into last week's pipe fails episode. <laughs> You know, I, I, how many times am I going to open up the Cherokee jar and someone says, man, that smells just like Red Man. It's like, I, you know, I, you can only take a beating so, so much. Well, I, I will, I will echo that. I do think the Glenn Piper does have that kind of uh, cocoa raisin. That is fantastic. Type, type, but... I, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled. <laughs> I, I cannot wait. I cannot wait to take one of our tobaccos next year and call it. I, I'm, I'm not even going to make a new tobacco. I'm just going to take an existing country squire tobacco, uh -huh. put it in another jar. So I have two jars of the same exact tobacco, <laughs> but this tobacco I will label raisin flavor. And, and, and people are like, wow, this is such a new, delicious blend. It's amazing. I just, you channeled the raisin flavor so raisins. well it. and it'll, and it'll be, you know, I, I don't know. It could be anything. It could be, um, it, it doesn't matter. It's we, just, uh, we touched a nerve unicorn. Okay. We touched yeah. A nerve. No, that, that's, that's it. <laughs> that, that's it. Uh, you got, you got my blood pressure up. It's so, great. so two, <laughs> so two very different tobaccos right here. Yeah. They're, and they're, and they're great. I think both in their own right, uh, you know, have, uh, have a good place on your shelf. So, uh, aromatic tobaccos, of course, the Robert McConnell, um, Glenn Piper is going to be a, a tobacco that, uh, you know, will appeal more to the full-bodied, uh, non-aromatic smokers that want maybe something just a little different. Um, but uh, but I think I think you'll be happy if you if you try both. That's good, man. Well, so you know, you mentioned of course in in the conversation. This always comes out during tobacco talks. We talk about all these various notes that you may get. You know, there's the hey, this is uh, this is this this used to be called orange tobacco. So you're going to yep. get the orange, but then you yep. know, you'd want to dive a little bit deeper, figure out what other notes are in there. And also when you're trying out new tobaccos, no matter what they are, you always, I will argue, you always run the risk of ghosting your, to your pipe. If Regardless. You don't, yeah. If you don't, yep. if you're going into this, you don't know which time, what you're tasting. That's always a risk. That's always a risk. So what we recommend is always making sure that you enjoy new tobaccos to get all of the run, wonderful flavor sensations out of a good quality, clean smoking pipe. 
like the good pipes at Missouri Meerschaum. No, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. <laughs> Missouri Meerschaum uh, makes the perfect tasting pipes for, Absolutely. The, for a new tasting experience. So anytime you uh, pick up that favorite, that new tobacco that you're curious about, whether it's one of the ones we talk about on Country Squire Radio or or someone something uh, something someone has gifted you, uh, a Missouri Meerschaum pipe is always, uh, always a safe bet to go. So, of course, valuable pipes at a very inexpensive price. Um, you know, a, a pipe like the Legend is perfect for this because it's a mm. medium sized bowl. Uh, it's very light. The length is just perfect for, uh, you know, for tasting without getting tongue bite. Um, you know, Missouri Meerschaum, they're, they're great because they make so many pipes that are uh, that are fun and funky and unique. You've got short little pocket pipes and big old church warden uh, MacArthur style pipes. Uh, but a pipe like the Legend is perfect for for tasting that that. Uh, new tobacco out of because you'll get a nice medium sized bowl. We're talking a, you know, 30, 40, 50 minute smoke here that uh, is going to give you just the perfect amount of time to, to enjoy and uh, that, that new tobacco and, and pick up all the, all the great flavors that are there. So uh, check out the great pipes at, uh, at Missouri Meerschaum. You can go to corncobpipe.com and get them straight from the manufacturer or of course at your favorite tobacconist uh, that is worth their salt. And That's so, right. uh, yeah. And if you got a legend, be sure to smoke it this week. Take a picture of yourself doing so. Tweet that in to us. We love retweeting it out because it's a great way to let the good folks at Missouri Meerschaum know that you appreciate them for sponsoring the show. All right, man. We got a pipe question of the week this week in from Nick Blackwell. Now, I made mention yeah. of this actually last week that um, this that we, we got during the pipe shop fails. Oh, no, that's right. Because this was uh, like a submission for that. But we thought maybe this would make its own good question in its own right exactly basically and, yeah. and also yeah. kind of a nice way to almost kind of follow up that episode a little yeah, bit sure. so if uh, if you haven't tuned in to that episode yet pipe shop fails part three or something of that nature um <laughs> be sure be sure to check that out it's a fun show we, we talk about like you know how we highly recommend uh, i highly recommend listening to episode one and episode two and then episode three I, I think that oh, just oh, gives I it I, I, yeah. of, of pipe, pipe shop, shop fails, fails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. series. I I think that gives it a nice uh, it, context there for uh for someone. Yeah. That's good. That's good. So yeah. yeah so, so but but so basically the the general concept <laughs> of the of the uh, series is to kind of figure out you know for John Dave to share some of uh, the more uh, tragic stories of the way that uh, various <laughs> customers have treated him or the shop or the products, uh, as well as for some customers to vent about how their local shops maybe not as well uh, representing themselves as they should. No, yeah, yeah, that's right. It's an airing of grievances is really what it is. No, yeah. It's, you a, know, it's we a are get, We are getting close to Festivus. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It is, it, you know what? It, it may, that needs to be a Festivus tradition. Maybe maybe me and Pilgrim's Act should have a feats of strength. Oh my goodness. That'd be, <laughs> that'd be amazing. All right, well, here is uh, Nick's question. He says, I want to know, does it constitute a fail on my part to sift through the tins in a store in order to find one that is older? He says that some shops around me have tins that sit around for years. And I'm, he says, I'm taking, uh, I'm talking about places that serve mostly as, you know, humidors. Anyway, yeah, sure. Anyway, there's a possible customer fail on my part because I ticked off one of the employees by asking him the ages of a bunch of fourth gen 1855 tins that he pulled from a drawer. Yeah. Yeah. Is I, that a pipe shop fail? I, I don't think so, to be honest with you. I, you know, uh, it's one of those things where, you know, if you're if you're into pipe tobacco, if you understand it, and if you're a retailer, you know that when you put something on the shelf like that, it it's not just you know something to sell to pay the bills. It's also it's an investment. Sure. You know, th these are investments. A lot of uh, a lot of tobaccos do appreciate with age, right? And so uh, there are folks that'll walk in their local cigar humidor and and look for some of you know if they're if it's a well maintained humidor, they'll look for some of the oldest. Uh, cigars that are there because they, you know, it's more seasoned and it's had an opportunity to mellow out and, and that kind of thing. Um, you know, and obviously uh, the aging process on uh, sealed pipe tobacco uh, has a tremendous amount of value, right? And so, you know, if you've got these tobaccos at a, at a shop, uh, man, go, go through it. it. You know, sometimes the ones with the most dust on them, that might be the best buy, right? Um, so yeah, I, I don't think that that's really a, a, a pipe shop fail on your part, I, you know, I, I'd, I would, I would be more than happy if you came to our shop to help you find, uh, you know, some of the older tins on our, on our shelf. Um, not, not that we have a bunch cause we, we tend to move our stuff pretty good, but there are shops that don't, you know, move a lot of pipe tobacco. And so the stuff can kind of sit and, um, and sometimes you're kind of paying, you know, when you buy the tobacco, you know, if you buy a, a five-year-old can of, uh, you know, Mac Baron Navy flake or something, you, you're kind of, you've, you've, you're kind of paying the store, 
to have aged it for you, you know, yeah, in, a, yeah. in a controlled environment. So, uh, so I don't know, maybe there's uh, something there, but uh, yeah, I, you know, I certainly as a, uh, as a retailer at tobacconist, I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be offended by that. Uh, if someone came in and said, Hey, what, you know, show me some of the things that maybe you've had a little while, uh, because I know what you're asking is, Hey, what's, what's fermented longer uh, in that can, what's developed some more uh, flavors and, and, and all that kind of thing, just from the, the process of aging, you know, pipe tobacco, we all know is so, uh, so good, particularly for those non-aromatics. Yeah. That's good. And, you know, I, I always kind of, in my head, I kind of qualify pipe shops, and, and as kind of any specialty store, like, you know, like, like a comic book shop or like a record store or something like that, you know what I mean? And in yeah. terms of, yeah, a lot of times you get the products, they're all out and displayed and, and, you know, in record stores and comic book shops, you think about those long, uh, long boxes where you kind of come through to find that record that you're looking for. You come through to find that issue that you're looking for. And I mean, like you can see right behind us for those that are tuned in live. I mean, here at the country squire, you've got all the tens lined up and yeah. everything else. I mean, they're, they're kind of there to be fiddled with. I mean, like, no, right? I, that's the fun of it, right? Yeah. You, you walk into a pipe shop and you want to rummage through their stuff. Right. Right. I mean, they, you know, there's these, you're uh, on the hunt. Well, you, you are on the hunt, right? Yeah. It's kind of like going to a, uh, I don't know your favorite thrift store or flea market or something. You're kind of wanting to, you know, just rummage through the stuff and see and see what they got. Now, for me, that's that's always part of the fun of going to a a, a, a smoke shop that I've never been in before, both for pipes and cigars. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's I think it's a good time. Yeah, I was I was about to bust out some. I'm gonna pop some tens as a parody for thrift store, but then I think we actually already did that once. So. <laughs> did we do that already? I think so. <laughs> somewhere back, and I'm sure Mike put some music under it and everything else like he uh, he's want to do. Yeah. <laughs> so it's somewhere in the archives. <laughs> Uh, well, great question. Um, and yes, yeah, so if it, uh, you can rest assured, Nick, you were not, uh, you you did not do a pipe shop fail. I would argue that it's on the pipe shops fail, like that the pipe shop failed you in that instance. Um, you know, I, I remember when McClelland was in business, obviously, we were a big McClelland dealer and had, you know, sold their tobacco for uh, decades. But, you know, on the bottom of every can of McClellan, they put the date of that tobacco hmm. on the tin. Yeah. And I, and, you know, people would go through our McClellan tins and turn over every single can to find, and, and people, when they came up to, you know, check out at the register, they say, man, I, I, this can, it, it has 2012 on it, you know, or something huh. like that. And, yeah. and they were really proud of that. And I was happy for them. You know, now, what, what's interesting about McClellan is a lot of times they would ship tobacco to the retailer that had been aged at their place and so you know i might i might order a tin of tobacco oh, in 20 i might order a tin of tobacco in 2017 huh. and and it would say 2014 on the tin which is kind of interesting um and so that you know there's wow. no telling how long it sat even at their warehouse which huh. is kind of interesting but um <laughs> man that, that's part of the fun for me you know uh, learn those date codes learn how to how to figure out, you know, how old those tins are. Cause you know, a lot of times the retailer won't know. I've, I've forgotten. I can't tell you how many times I've learned and then forgotten how to date Dunhill, you know, pipe tobacco, uh, because there's a very specific way with the code that's on there. So, you know, learn it, uh, and, and enjoy the treasure hunt. That's good. Yeah. All right, man. Quick fire questions. Ow! All right, man. Here we go. These are coming in from <laughs> Jordan Scoville. Uh, all right, this is a car Jordan. car edition or driving edition. Okay. Let's say. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, which is great because are you a car guy? Not really. Yeah, neither am I. So yeah. this will be fun. I, I I appreciate it occasionally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so manual or automatic? Automatic. Do you know how to drive a stick? I do not know how to drive a stick. I don't either. Yeah, so. That, I, I, would you I, like to? I just, I, I can't believe I just admitted that in front of, you know. <laughs> the Country Squire radio crowd. But potentially. <laughs> In, you know, potentially, you know, 20,000 people, but I mean, uh, I, I, I can't, I can't drive, you know, I, I can't do it. Judgment, judgment. This is, this is, this is the, the and, raising and frankly, council and frankly, is, is I've earned judging it. you. And frankly, I've earned it. You know, those memes about like, you know, uh, you know, a, a, a hipster will never be able to, uh, you know, steal a, you know, a car because it's got, uh, a manual transmission or whatever like that that's me like if it, I, you could give me the keys to one and say hey it's yours and i wouldn't even be able to drive it away no nah. yeah <laughs> isn't that terrible it'd be strained. <laughs> a car truck or suv uh i think it's your preference not necessarily what you drive yeah no 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 that's good uh i'm gonna go with a car mm -hmm. i like the maneuverability of a car but i i have a pickup truck and a car and I enjoy driving both for different occasions, but I, I on average, I'm gonna go with a, a car. I, I like an SUV. I find them to be very versatile. 
Well, and you can put more stuff in them. Right? Yeah, it's you know, it's like, and, and you got you know kids and all that kind of stuff. Well, so, but even beyond you know. the kids, like I mean, yes, that's that's why I have an SUV. But at the yeah. same time, yeah, it's big enough that you can move your own stuff. But it's not a truck where you feel like you're required to move other people's stuff. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> Nobody calls up the guy with an SUV because you're moving. But if you're moving, yeah, then you got your SUV, and yeah. then you also call your friend with a truck. And by the way, I have a hard and fast rule when it comes to uh, people borrowing my truck for uh -huh. moving. You, you can either have my truck. Or you can have me, but you cannot you have, have both. both. <laughs> you, you cannot have both. Yes. And like, Bo, you're one of my best friends. But if you called me and said, hey, I'm moving this weekend, <laughs> I, I would tell you, do you want me or do you want my truck? I'd choose you. Man. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, and you did. You helped me move into my house. And I, I remember I did. the back of that U-Haul uh, where we were yeah. like back there holding down the, no, that's like right. the bed or something like that. that, that that's, that's exactly right. You made the bed in the back of a U-Haul. I'm sure the Internet's not going to do anything with that. Wow. Uh, all right, man. Satellite or FM radio? Uh, FM. Yeah. I, you know, I don't listen to a lot of radio. I'm, I'm more of a podcast guy. I know that's hard to believe. Yeah. I don't think I've listened to the radio in over a decade. I listen to radio occasionally, yeah. you know, okay. it's something I do, but I, I don't, you know, I just don't listen to a whole lot, but you know, when I do, I guess it's going to be just FM radio. I remember when, the way you get kind of a local flavor and mm -hmm. stuff, you know, I remember when satellite came out and it was like this big, you know, everybody was going crazy about satellite and it was kind of like the premium thing to have in your car. Yeah, no, that's right. But like, you know, now that I'm in the audio, uh, the audio, uh, not auto, but the audio industry, like I know the stats and satellite is a sliver of a percentage. It's got to be pretty small. It's huh? like eight yeah. to seven percent. Well, now we spend. have all our smartphones and stuff. And so you, you've got you've got satellite ish radio on yeah. your, on your phone, you know, and you listen to podcasts. I can download audio books exactly. on a trip kind yeah. of thing. I, I don't, when I'm on a trip, I, I listen to audio book. That's yeah. kind of what I do. I go, I go back and forth between audio books and podcasts. And then <laughs> this is crazy, but when I listen to music, I typically listen through YouTube of all things. <laughs> uh, all right. So between the two of those, I'm, I'm a neither. I uh, then self or full service in terms of uh, pumping gasoline. Self service. Cause I don't want to tip anyone. Same. <laughs> I, I didn't even know full service was still a thing. What, what's funny, you know, there are states where it is illegal to pump your own gas. Did you know that? I did not. Know did that. you know? Did you know you were breaking the law in the state of New Jersey if you pump your own gas? It's no problem. I'll never be driving in New Jersey. <laughs> I, 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 I'm dead serious. I didn't know that until earlier this year. Wow, crazy. Uh, ask any one of our friends, our, our listeners from New Jersey. They'll tell you. Like, you, like you, you cannot. My Even mom. if you wanted to pump your own gas, in the state for, I, I, I would be curious. Who, to learn whoever about that. has control over the local gas pumpers union, <laughs> I could just see them like with their giant like cigar, like man, see we got this industry on lockdown, man. Holding the whole try, fast. just try, try I just pumping didn't your even own know gas. That was a thing. It seems it's like a such thing. A... There's one self service gas. There's one uh, full service gas station in the city of Jackson, and it's over by Whole Foods over there, of course. Of course. And uh, you know, you, you'll see the little oh. ladies pulling up in their, yeah. you know, the Chevron. Yeah. If you pull up close in the lane, I see the old ladies. If you pull up in the lane closest to the to the station, it says full. Someone's going to come out there and 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 pump your gas for you. So this is the, so all right. So that's my only context. But you this. better tip them. Well, so I. I have pulled up to the full service and pumped my own gas, though, because the other ones were. Well, you made someone mad. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought that was like a like a bygone thing. Like, you know, you know how people keep the old signs that like yeah, like yesteryear. Yeah, I, that's what I thought. that yeah. was. But I have no, seen the it. old ladies. That's it. All right, man. So uh, the last two night or day driving, uh, day driving, day driving. Absolutely. Night driving is dangerous. A deer. I, I don't know where you are in the rest of the country, but here, deer. Uh, and then interstate highway or country roads, you know, generally a country road. Yeah. I, 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 it's just more fun, right? You get to see the back roads and go through little small towns. I don't know. I like it. Country road. Take me home to the place where I belong. Take it away. Mississippi. It's West Virginia. I know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Country roads all the way. If for no other reason than that song, which is great. Yep. All right, that's going to be the quick fire questions. Again, that's coming in from uh, Jordan. Thank y'all so yeah, much. It was for great. That. You always love hearing from Jordan. Hey, yep. if you got some quick fire questions for us, be sure to uh, uh, send them in show at countrysquireradio.com. Again, that's show at countrysquireradio.com. Mountain Mama, take me home. All right, let's see. <laughs> Sorry, now I got, I'm gonna have that stuck in my head. I was hoping we we're gonna get out of this episode without you singing, you know. But nah, anyway, man, that's, yeah, that's you don't want that. Well, that's how we're gonna get. Yeah, that's get how it. we're gonna do it today. Yeah. All right, man. Listener feedback. We got a uh, nice email from uh, from Derek again. This is kind of following up the um, the the pipe sh uh, shop fails. Yeah. Always a popular episode. Yeah. Always no, generates content like beyond 
uh, that that one particular episode. So uh, <laughs> let's let's see what uh, Derek had to say. Yeah, Derek. Hey guys, I wish I had a pipe shop fail to add for another show, but my only complaint is being recognized in a smoke shop as quote the pipe guy. I live in a pipe desert, and my local tobacconist has a pipe selection the size of a mini fridge. Uh, I've been in a pipe. I've been a pipe smoker on and off for years, but during the past year, I've developed uh, patience, and pipe smoking has become so much more enjoyable and a process to slow down after a long day. Which you know we see that people dabble, they go away from the pipe, then they kind of uh, get interested again, they relearn how to do it, and then uh, and then he's all in. So uh, that's that's Derek's story. He says anyway. I have a dumb question. What's up with esoterica? I've heard jokes about it. I've seen cartoons about it in Pipes Magazine. <laughs> I've seen it on so many good tobacco websites, but never in stock. And I haven't even met someone <laughs> who's had it. Um, it's it's humorous at this point. The biggest tobacco conspiracy since Sam Gay with Black XX, a tobacco everyone has heard of, but no one can smoke. Uh, not, not no one has smoked, but he said no one can smoke. Yeah. Uh, Esoterica seems to be a tobacco that exists, but no one has smoked it. No one has ever bought it. Uh, but exists only on websites. The reviews are just from people who don't want to seem like they've never had it. <laughs> just like the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. The Esoterica gold packaging disappears whenever you get close. Is it really that good? And what makes it so sought after and out of stock all the time? Here's a Squire scenario. You sh you're shipwrecked on a desert island. You've done the Robinson Crusoe thing and are able to live pretty okay. You have plenty of matches, pipe cleaners, pipe tools, and a great assortment of pipes. What are the two tobaccos you'd want to have with you? All right, so, so, he's, so he's commenting on several things in, in his feedback here. Sure, We've yeah, got, yeah, yeah. Uh, first of all, being the pipe guy, the quote-unquote pipe guy, at a, a at a at a shop that doesn't do a lot of pipe stuff, right? I feel like that could be an episode unto itself. It, it really could. I, you know, I've I've been in other shops where they're like, well, you know, this shop they don't do any pipe stuff, but yeah. they let us come here and you know take up their space and Th drink and drink their coffee that and that is kind of thing. Common. And and that's really common. Yeah. So I, you know, um, yeah, we ought to probably ought to talk about yeah, that some good. more because there's uh, honestly most premium smoke shops in America. That's probably if you're a pipe enthusiast, that's probably the case. And so, um, yeah, interesting. Um, yeah, and then of course talking about the esoterica stuff um yeah it, what you don't know is each and every package comes with a bottle of champagne and and, and so when you buy it no, uh, you're getting that <laughs> there, there's a golden ticket in there that um you know gives you a yes. free ride on a yacht uh, -huh. uh it, it, it's just it's it's incredible instant teleportation no uh, an instant yeah you yeah. get you're it opens up a whole new universe right and it's so virtual um, augmented reality that you experience right then and there yeah yeah, uh, that, that's that's right. And yeah. So, yeah, you know, I, drone. I, I don't know. I'm just throwing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he, he, tesla yeah right Te yeah just start naming things that are um it's all crammed in esoteric <laughs> yeah or, or esoteric yeah no it, you know it is amazing uh you know obviously we've talked about it uh multiple times it, it's something that i'm tempted occasionally to review like in a tobacco talk right. that we do but i i don't want to because no one can ever get the stuff right so let me review this tobacco for you and then you want to smoke it, but then you can't go, you can't even go find it. You know, it'd be like me reviewing uh, today, a McClellan tobacco. Well, you, they don't even make the stuff anymore. So, it, 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 you know, with Esoterica, they make it, but it's like, well, you can't go get it. So I, I don't know. It just kind of makes it difficult. Um, anyway, yeah, it, 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 good tobacco. There's some a, excellent tobaccos there. Um, it's just but kind of, you know, kind of become the it thing. And it, and it mm. moved on from uh, Stonehaven and Penzance being the ones to get. And now all of them are hard to get. Yeah. And, and, it, and it doesn't matter. I could have, uh, I could have, you know, uh, 48 cans of Margate and they'd be gone. You know, that it, it doesn't matter which one it is. And so I, I, I think the yeah. folks there, they're masters of scarcity. They're masters of packa Marketing. packaging. Yes. Uh, you know, they, they know what they're doing. Yes. And, um, and, 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 you know, the stuff just, it's, it's great tobacco. Uh, is it worth 75 bucks for a two ounce 10? Maybe. I, no, I'm going to say maybe. I, 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 I'm going to say. There's, exactly. Maybe there's, you know, the market out there. If you, if you want to buy it, if you want to try it that bad, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the market in some sense will sustain it. I, I was reading, a uh, there's an esoterica group uh, on Facebook. I was reading and this, um, the, this this tobacconist they instead of selling whole tins of esoterica this kind of blew my mind i've got mixed feelings about this but instead of sending whole s selling whole tins of it they broke up they opened the bag or the can and they were selling one ounce portions of esoterica for ten dollars plus tax a piece wow now what one dollar one ounce of this stuff for wow. ten bucks and i'm just thinking like 
you know, if you're going to do that, like start a pipe club. Like if you're going to do that, sure. open a, open an eBay store. Like, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. For, for me, it was just a little, a little over the top, you mm-hmm. know? So I, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, it, it's on there. It, the, the reason it's hard to get is because it comes with, uh, it comes with champagne. We still have not done our esoteric eccentric episode. That needs to happen. I don't think we have, have we? No, we never have. And that needs to be a goal for 2019. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll do that. That needs to happen. Uh, lastly, uh, just very quickly, two pipe tobaccos on the desert Island. Um, I'd probably uh, go with our house blend Merriweather and gosh, Vowin 14, but, but with a close second, with a very close second, uh, of Orlick golden slice, uh, the Vowin it, it by, by a hair. Yeah. Is the, it, the Vowin uh, Virginia flake by a hair. Is it yeah. possible to revive no longer on the market tobaccos? Cause I would yeah, say sure. my two, my two would be, uh, frog Morton cellar yeah. and treasure Island from, uh, from the squire, from the squire. Yeah. 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 No, that's good. Yeah. Very different tobaccos, but like, well, that's what you want. Exactly. You're on a desert island. You're on you a know? desert island. And plus, right. like, you desert have island, a treasure island, like, like with that nice rum in the... Uh, oh, yeah, that's good. Sco- I mean, like, that's just... Yeah. that That's a match made in heaven. In yeah, my no, I like that. That is a beach tobacco. But anyway. It is. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> uh, well, great, great listener feedback. Thank you so much for that. Man, also, uh, I've been... This episode, I've been doing my best to dive into the the YouTube uh, uh, chat. Yeah, it's you know I kind of like that. If you'll take YouTube, I can kind of take uh, Look at twi- us. Twitter. It's almost right? like we planned that, and and, and we, we didn't. didn't. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it's almost like that, uh, man. So we've uh, we got some great um, thoughts from our friends in Jersey. Uh, Jason is actually saying that the um, the self service or the full service rather is really helpful, spe- specifically when the weather is that cold um it's it's nice to have you know it makes sense and he does say that sense. he has never actually tipped anybody who who does the full service but up there they just charge a little bit more so it's like baked okay. into the the price of the gas okay so, okay um yeah uh, you know yeah, uh, to each his own you know i i you know yeah it's a foreign concept to us because we're down in mississippi you know what i mean like it's just yeah it's just, we just don't do that no it's just yeah. it's just different except if you're the old lady that drives her jaguar up by the whole food yeah, yeah. And, and i don't i don't I don't think Jason is that old lady. I could be wrong, but I, I don't think he is. It doesn't strike me as an old lady name. No, no. He might have a Jaguar, so. though. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Uh, man, we also uh, got a lot of feedback that most everybody uh, podcasts and audiobooks in terms of the quick fire questions instead of uh, radio or satellite. Right. Um, uh, yeah, there's, a, there's the Council of Raisins, was it? The, the Raisin Council is uh, putting together a formal complaint. Uh, that we will be receiving <laughs> here in the future. Uh, they're <laughs> rightfully coming to Unicorn's aid. Uh, as uh, as as <laughs> no, that's that's fair. I, you know, we ought maybe we should interview. Uh, we we could have a new or one of our new sponsors could be uh, the 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 Council of Raisins. The Council the Raisin, of Raisins. Raisin Council. Yeah, yeah. I, I I don't know. <laughs> uh, Port, Portland Paul uh, asks where you get the Rat Craze Exotic Passion. Uh, I'll I'll try to find that. Um, uh, it may be under exotic orange, uh, so check that out. Uh, he also says every single time I open a new blend and revel in how delicious it smells, I'm uh, I'm talking about the different notes I'm picking out. Uh, and my daughter says, "Let me smell it." And with a devilish smirk, she says, "It smells like raisins, just to bug me." So see, obviously, it's uh, it, it, it goes both ways. It's not just for me. Uh, you know, even uh, even Portland Paul's precious daughter well, is uh, you know. is is picking up on the fun. So uh, she she picked that up, by the way, uh, just from watching the show. So uh, to to Portland <laughs> Paul's daughter, to Portland Paul's daughter, you you are the only one that can get away with it, and and we're and we smile. I love it. Yeah, I love how we're <laughs> Country Squire Radio is such a bridge uh, uh, medium because we've got we've got you know the the longtime pipe smokers we've got yeah. the 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 current generation if you will the incoming I, I don't even know if it's it's accurate to say that we're still part of the incoming generation but now we've got the up and coming generation no that's right that, that's the it's our uh, that's our future generation it's, it's yeah. crazy Portland Paul also says Oregon is a no self service gas state as well oh, and wow. no one tips so he says even in Oregon where they it, it you you have to this is such get a someone. Thing, yeah, it's just, yeah, I had no, yeah, I, I had no, had no clue it was a thing. Yeah. Wow. I just haven't ever driven in either of those States. So I don't know, but you don't, apparently you don't tip, uh, or at least, you know, <laughs> it, 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 either you don't tip or they spit on Portland Paul's car every time he fills up his car. Right. right. So, right. <laughs> and he's just getting it wrong, but yeah. I, I, that's probably not the case. John but. Griffin, right. <laughs> uh, weighing in on the esoteric, uh, our brief discussion, we are going to have a more in-depth one. Yeah, sure. Uh, you're coming up sure. next year, but yeah, 
Uh, John Gr Griffin says uh, everything is worth what someone is willing to pay for it. That's true. I and mean, I that, think that's really that's no, really you, what it comes down right. to. For me, it's not worth it. For someone else, it might be exactly might be super worth. It. Yeah, it's, it's all it. it's all about the market. You know, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, good stuff. Well, great, great listener feedback uh, throughout the live show. And of course, uh, if, if you want to tune in live, we'd love to have you. We do it Mondays at noon. Uh, we're actually doing it live here at the Country Squire. As you heard throughout the episode, you might have heard some people walking through the door. Uh, you might hear a little chatting in the background. Uh, the Country Squire is, is, is a haven for many locally here. And Maybe even a haven away from haven for those of you who want to take your pipe pilgrimage uh, to come in. No, and, that's right. And enjoy uh, that's right. us doing the show. I, you might have even heard some chuckles as I busted out singing. Uh, that's they got a lot. Yeah, people in the background were horrified. They were, they were, horrified. They were, they were running for the hills. No, yeah. they were, they were, no, they were was, like, where uh, do I get this out? Somebody. Our, our I, sales for the rest of the day are, are going through the floor. I meant, I, I meant to mention this. Somebody said they need we need a Country Squire uh, radio album of sorts. And I think we should do a Christmas album. Like the two of us, like with our pipes, like. You know, and everything, and uh, you know, silver bells. Wow, maybe some of that old like Bing Crosby yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay, we'll talk about it. Well, we got a, we got a, we got a holiday special coming up. <laughs> should we, should we kind of tease up this holiday special? Uh, not, not quite, not yet. quite yet, not okay. quite yet. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, it's, I it's, am excited about it. Yeah, we let's, um, yeah, we. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Fair enough. That, yeah. That's all we'll say about not, that. Not quite yet. Not, not quite yet. Yeah. Uh, it will hey, be. It will be special. We'd love for you to join us again. That's at CountrySquireRadio.com. You can also follow us throughout the week on the Twitters. I'm at the Real Bo York. I'm at John David Cole. Or you can get us at the shop at at underscore Country Squire. And of course, these shows handle is at Squire Radio. But all that information and more can be found at CountrySquireRadio. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. Uh, also, uh, I'm, I'm going to throw this out there because I'm going to put this up on the Twitter. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, me, Ed, Mark, we, uh, we've got the, the Squire Scallywags on right. the, um, uh, our, our pirate group on a game called Sea of Thieves. Yeah. I just want to put it out there. If y'all want to play this game, they just like put out this big uh, 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 update and everything with a lot of kind of cool stuff. If you want to get your pirate on while hanging out with some pipe friends, uh, let us know. We'll add you to the Scallywags. And um, it's a lot of fun. I actually, I just recorded a uh, Twas the Night Before Christmas for a Sea of Thieves podcast that I listened to. Yeah. Uh, except uh, Santa Claus is a pirate, Captain Nick. Oh, good. It's really good. I'm going I'm to I'm throw Captain it up Nick. on Twitter okay. so people can hear it. It's, yeah, it's pretty good. fun. I had some fun with it. But anyway, so yeah, so uh, hopefully we get to, to game with some of you guys. And uh, yeah, I think that's... Uh, that's that man that's tobacco it. talk dude tobacco always have fun with tobacco talk brings us back to our our roots the good stuff and uh yeah look forward to uh hearing if y'all have ever smoked those tobaccos give us your feedback absolutely so, yeah. well, hey let's go have a day see you brother all right man thank y'all so much had fun yeah it was good it's <laughs> always good to join y'all man i'm glad uh i saw kilted pipe guy uh was able to join us on his lunch break uh oh, nice. and uh man it's good i know uh not everyone can but um man it was uh it was good to, good to have you with us today so you should eat you should apologize to Unicorn, man. I think he was. I think he was hurting. I no. I think he he, he took the full the full. Like I think all of that <sighs> rage you had for the raisin crowd, you poured it directly into him, man. I, I am. I am sorry. Yeah, yeah. You know. I. I. I and and I like raisins and unicorns and unicorns. I. You know. I. I we should have a unicorn flavored tobacco. <laughs> that is terrifying. Interesting. That would come with a bottle of champagne. That would come with a bottle of champagne. <laughs> I'm, I'm, if you, it, that might be worth discussing at I don't, some point. I don't know. What would a rain? What would, what would a what would a unicorn? Because I'm thinking like a rainbow style, like a like a cherry for the red. Then you got the orange type of. Okay. Blend. You know what I mean? Like yeah, you, you blueberry. Go, you kind of Roy G. Bivet up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You could, you could probably do that. We'll, we'll, we'll. <laughs> I think it's kind of coming off the rails here. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. That's all right. That's, so, that's because the main show is over. Yeah, this uni is all the unicorn. I, I think. Um. Yeah. I. <laughs> hey. Look. I love. I love raisins. I love oatmeal. Oatmeal raisin. I love uh, chocolate covered raisins. We don't have a raisin flavored tobacco. Bye guys. Bye y'all. <laughs>